So the next crisis is already waiting for us. Welcome to the program. Glad you can join me today. The perfect storm for the installation of the Antichrist is in play now. And I am of the belief that we today are witnessing an orchestrated dismantling, or if you prefer, a controlled demolition of the old world order to reset for the new world order. It's important to understand that this agenda, and that's what it is, an agenda, has been in the works for decades. For that matter, it could have been in works for centuries. But now, today, it is reaching its final stage. And one need look no further than this quote from Klaus Schwab, the founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. He says, The pandemic represents a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect, reimagine, and reset our world. Olive Tree is carrying a new book titled The Global Reset, subtitled Do Current Events Point to the Antichrist and His Worldwide Empire? It is co-authored by Mark Hitchcock and Jeff Kinley. I have them both on the line. They also will be joining us on June 9th. I'll say more about that later. But I want to get right into the programming and not take time away from my two guests, gentlemen. Welcome back to Understanding the Times Radio. Great to be with you again, Jan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jeff, I have in front of me, and I'm going to get to issues within your book, but what I have in front of me is a headline from Bart News Online. The headline is, Klaus Schwab pledges the world can find salvation at Davos. He's referring to their annual meeting, and it's been online for a couple of years. In the end of May, they met in person at Davos 2022. He's saying that not only the attendees, but the whole world can find salvation thanks to their meeting that they had the end of May. Your comment to this? First of all, he means that. He believes that the World Economic Forum and the global elites that have gathered there have the answers for the world. They believe they're bringing in a new dawn, a new day, a new age even. That's what the global reset is all about. It really foreshadows, I think, the first Thessalonians 5 passage where the Antichrist says, hey, peace and safety, and that's what they'll promise in this agenda. I'm just shocked by the bluntness that he's pledging that the world can find salvation. Obviously, we know there's salvation only from one source, and that is not the source he's referring to. Am I right, Mark? That's correct. I think what he's saying, basically, too, is one-third of all the meetings that they had at Davos were about climate change. Yes. So I think a lot of this, you know, this is going to bring salvation. So I think they look at it, they're going to bring physical salvation to the world because they're going to save us from what they perceive as total destruction from global warming or climate change. They also see it, I think, as bringing fairness to the world, kind of bringing everybody down to the same level. Because it's basically just a capitalist, socialist, totalitarianism is what they want to bring in. And through that, they think they can bring salvation. Of course, the only salvation this world's ever going to find is when Jesus comes back, the Prince of Peace. But they think they can have it without him. That is true. Gentlemen, I've read your book, The Global Reset. I've read it cover to cover. Very gripping and very captivating. Early on, you talk about open borders. And as I speak... This is perhaps the greatest dilemma, at least since Mr. Biden has gotten into office, with our open border frightful situation. And yet this crowd, the Global Reset crowd, the World Economic Forum, and we'll tell you more information about them as we go through the hour, folks. They love open borders because they are saying on a regular basis, we are all world citizens, no national allegiances, no patriotism. Am I right? That's absolutely true. In fact, the key to becoming one for the World Economic Forum is to dissolve those borders. And of course, that's just emblematic. That's a physical representation of everything else that's going to happen, especially economically. Just recently, this whole term of geoeconomic fragmentation, they say it's got to go away. We've got to become one in our finances and our currency as well. It's on every level that they want us to become one. They describe it as being like having cabins on a ship that all the nations are just like these little cabins. And what affects the whole ship affects everybody in the cabin. That's part of the impetus for everyone becoming as one. Mark Hitchcock, what I keep reading, what I keep hearing, because I follow these guys, and I read the World Economic Forum website occasionally, redistribution of wealth, constant denouncing of capitalism, obviously no borders, as already referenced. Slogans like, even God bless America, considered shameful, and I think at one point even called evil. Most of the world seems to be for this kind of globalism, lack of patriotism. One who was against it, of course, was former President Donald Trump. 
But help us understand this a little bit more, this no national allegiance, no patriotism. It's part of, to use another term we use, this woke ideology to make the majority in developed countries, the wealthy, feel guilty about their wealth, which the elites want to reset downwards, if you will. So the whole policy reflects their idea, and I put this in quotation marks, though, of fairness. In other words, it's lowering the economic status of people in wealthier nations like the United States relative to that of those who are in the other parts of the world. One thing that is interesting is they want all this fairness and redistribution except for the elites themselves. That's right. (laughs) They want to be exempt from this. They're going to need to be rich, you know, in order to fly their private jets to Davos each year to take part in all these activities. Basically, unfettered immigration it fits into their plan, as does the Federal Reserve's unrestrained printing of money, increased taxation, increased dependence on the state, even broken supply chains all fit into their plan of crisis and then bringing more control to bear on that than ultimately instituting their total totalitarian system that they want to bring to the entire globe. Jeff Kinley, could the reset be the tribulation? In other words, what we're seeing now, and again, end of May, they met in Davos and schemed and planned and wheeled and dealed, but could the reset just simply be the tribulation? And we're seeing the setup. Well, absolutely. There's going to be a fulfillment of the global reset in the tribulation where Antichrist will have a one world government over the whole planet. But what we're seeing right now, Jen, is the build up to that. Now, the real question is, how far will they get in their agenda prior to the rapture, mm-hmm. prior to the church being removed from the planet? That's the big question mark. It's the big unknown. No one really knows the answer. But I'll tell you what we are seeing right now is a great sense of velocity in the developments of their agenda. And we're seeing this really affect the whole world globally. It's like these ripple effects that are going across the world from Davos. How far it goes, we don't know, but certainly it is a ramp up to revelation in that sense. A ramp up to revelation. I love that. I'm going to play a short clip here, and this is under the assumption that there are some listening to us. We have lots of news stations, and they may not be real familiar with what we're talking about. The book is just out, so they probably haven't read the book. I'm going to play a short clip. It's CBN News, and I think they have summarized this in just a couple of minutes better than anybody I've heard. Here's a video of your future, if some people at the World Economic Forum get their way. They say you'll own nothing and be happy about it. Energy will be green, rationed, and expensive. And travel will be restricted. Even your diet will be controlled. And currency will be digital. This left-wing dystopian dream is called the Great Reset and you're supposed to be excited about it. The Great Reset has been labeled a conspiracy theory and even sounds like a conspiracy theory. But everything we know about it comes from the global elites themselves, who have been quite open about it. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is a well-documented movement among many of the world's most powerful people. Justin Haskins is a leading authority on the Great Reset. Fundamentally, This is a radical and complete transformation of everything that we do in our society. To control people's behaviors, to control businesses, and to move society in the direction that you want to move it, it will change the way businesses are evaluated, it'll coerce businesses to pursue left-wing causes. The Great Reset was unveiled at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland where many of the world's most powerful people go to offer solutions to the world's problems. And the World Economic Forum sees the coronavirus pandemic as a historic opportunity to change the way the world operates. Right now we're facing a crisis of international proportion. It's going to have long-term impact for us. Their solution is essentially global socialism. Think of the Green New Deal combined with the COVID-19 lockdown restrictions and throw in something called the Fourth Industrial Revolution, in which technology is supposed to radically change the way we live and work. Klaus Schwab is the founder of the World Economic Forum. What the Fourth Industrial Revolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, our digital, and our biological identities. It has the support not only of world leaders, but of global corporations like MasterCard and BP, brought to you by people who think they know what's best for you. 
by giving the elites, the technocrats in society, the most educated people, the ability to manipulate society, pull the levers in society, and manage and manipulate society so that it's, in their minds, perfect. English journalist and author James Dellingpole. You'd be amazed by how many world leaders are on board with this globalist plan, even people that claim to be conservative. This is worse than Nazism. This is worse than communism. This is worse than fascism. These guys are planning on taking over the whole world. Mark Hitchcock, that last sentence, it's worse than communism, fascism. They're going to take over the whole world. That said it all. That does. That's exactly the agenda of the Antichrist. And really, the one who's ultimately behind this is Satan himself. Satan is the master globalist. The whole world was gathered together after the flood in one place in Babylon, ruled over by one man, by Nimrod. And of course, God comes and scatters people over the face of the earth. And we've gone from tribalism to nationalism, and we're back to globalism again. Satan's trying to bring the whole world back together again under one person, exactly as he had after the flood. And so that's where everything's moving. And you have Babylon in Revelation 10 and 11. We have Babylon again in Revelation 17 and 18. Everything's going to come full circle. And that's the agenda. Satan is the ultimate driving force behind this. But these global elites are being used by him to bring this to pass. Mark Hitchcock and Jeff Kinley are co-authors of the book We Carry, The Global Reset. Do current events point to the Antichrist and his worldwide empire? My goodness, a hearty yes to that question. Find it in my online store, olivetreeviews.org, or call my office or get on our newsletter lists, Ian Print. It's advertised and promoted in those periodicals. Mark and Jeff are coming to the Twin Cities. That would be Thursday, June 9th, 7 p.m. here in Brooklyn Park, a northwest suburb of Minneapolis. And the evening will be live streamed at markhenryministries.com. Pastor Mark and I will be there as well to conduct the evening activities. The program will be archived at olivetreeviews.org. You can watch it anytime. Again, that's Revived Church, formerly Brooklyn Park Evangelical Free, 7849 West Broadway, Brooklyn Park, 7 to 9, no cost to attend or live stream. We'll be talking about these issues that we're discussing right now. You can get the book that night if you'd like. Watch live at markhenryministries.com, June 9th, 7 p.m., And you can watch it archived, olivetreeviews.org, olivetreeviews.org, and go to video or at markhenryministries.com. Gentlemen, in that clip and in some other things I've been reading, including your book, it appears to me that respecting Mother Nature is more important than respecting human life. Would I be right there? Absolutely. And that's part of the WEF's pillar agenda. That's part of their value system here is to serve the planet. And we were made for the planet. The planet wasn't made for us, as the Bible says. So, yeah, that's a part of it. What I find really interesting, Jan, is that when you get into the World Economic Forum's website and you read what they've written there, this is not a hidden agenda. It's not a hiding behind closed doors type of meeting. They're very vocal about this thing, which is unlike most people who try to accomplish these type of nefarious plans. The point is that where we are in history right now, because of the crisis that we have been through, it has opened up the body of the world so that they can come in and do their surgery. And and as Mark alluded to, these guys are planning to steal the world from right under our noses. This is a global heist, and our own government is an accomplice in this thing. Satan is the one who's behind the whole thing, and he is a brilliant strategist. All these things are going according to bullet point plans that he has outlined. Jeff, unfortunately, what we're discussing right now, and even your book, it's called a conspiracy theory. You and I know it isn't, but that is what the world is calling what you and I are talking about. That's what big tech is calling this, just a conspiracy theory. The same thing with Noah. I mean, the whole idea of a flood was a huge conspiracy theory. There are only a handful of people who even believed it on the planet among billions. But guess what? God's Word always comes true in the end, and we can go straight to our Bible and read about what's happening and see how these things are fitting into the pieces of God's overall end times puzzle. Mark Hitchcock, I'm reading a paragraph from the book, and I want your comment. You write, we are living in an age where everything, including reality itself, is being redefined in order to conform to a godless worldview and its value system. But as far-reaching as this values hijacking is, do not think for a moment that Satan is satisfied. On the contrary, he has his sights set on an even greater goal to rule the world. 
Nothing short of sitting on Earth's pilot seat will do for him. But why? So, Mark, he had a huge degree of success, and surely he knows that his retirement plan is not very good. But he simply cannot seem to get enough power. Am I right? That's right. We go back to the very beginning. I mean, that's Satan's desire is to be like God. He wants to usurp God's place and take God's throne. So to do that, there's a mass campaign, a word we hear a lot about today, disinformation. (laughs) Satan is the master of disinformation. He's the one who's bringing all the disinformation that's coming into our world today. He's behind all of that to confuse people, to bring people along like sheep, to follow after and to surrender their rights in government, to surrender their rights to authority, where ultimately he's going to be able to dominate the world through this totalitarian system, through this final world ruler who's the Antichrist. So that's Satan's ultimate goal is to dominate the world. Again, as I said earlier, he had it back in the beginning before God scattered people over the face of the earth. And as the master globalist, that's what he wants again. He's going to settle for nothing less than that. And we'll have that briefly for a period of time during the tribulation period until Jesus comes and dismantles this satanic system. Jeff, I'm reading another paragraph from the book, and I want your comment. And you say this, Crisis politics keeps everyone on edge. It sows seeds of fear and panic. Over time, it creates an environment where people are willing to do anything or surrender any right to solve the crisis. Issues like the pandemic, climate change, and inflation are not so much calamities to be solved, but crises to be exploited. You say, whatever the crisis, the solution is always the same. Bigger government. The authoritarian impulse is accelerating on every front. The tentacles of authoritarianism reach far and wide. The groundwork is being laid to create submissive citizens who are dependent and conditioned to bow the knee to edicts handed down from on high. In other words, Jeff, what you're really saying is everything is being prepared for the Antichrist, who will have the ultimate answers to dilemmas that are almost incomprehensible. That's true. It's classic conditioning, even from a psychological standpoint. It's really global conditioning. What they've done is they're systematically wearing down the populace of the world, getting them used to a series of crises that then turn into chaos that the government comes in and brings calm to. And then after that, we finally just say, well, we'll just comply. We'll do what you ask us to do. By doing that, it's like those little toy handcuffs we used to have as children. The further in you go, the harder it is to get out. So the final step in this whole thing is control, to where you find yourself trading in freedoms for security. And instead of fighting for freedoms, which is traditionally what freedom-loving people have done, we're in a process now. We're just gradually giving over the store. We're giving our lives to global government. That's the pattern that we're seeing, crisis, chaos, calm, compliance, and then finally control. It's just a conditioning for a world that is waiting for a Messiah-like figure to come and to give them that ultimate sense of it's all going to be okay, peace is here, and of course we know that person to be Antichrist. Dr. Mark Hitchcock, you want to comment on that? Yes, what we're seeing today is a lot of accelerants that are moving this agenda forward. COVID, obviously, climate change, currencies, what's happening with cryptocurrencies in our world today. The ultimate accelerant, though, that's going to move this agenda forward, I think, is the rapture. People talk about how this whole global reset's a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy, but it's not a theory. It's true. It's a true global conspiracy. But the one accelerant that I think is going to move this forward faster than anything is when the rapture takes place. Then there's going to be global chaos, and that's going to open the door, I think, even wider. Whatever point this global reset is when the rapture takes place, the rapture is going to be the accelerant that's going to move it forward. It'll mushroom then because there'll be chaos in the world. A man's going to step forward. He's going to have a plan. And he's going to be able to bring peace out of this chaos, but it's going to come at a price of people surrendering all their freedoms ultimately to him. We don't know how far the global reset will get until the rapture takes place, but that I think will be the final piece that will move it forward to where the Antichrist can come and take over the world. And you have a chapter in the book, How Does America Fit Into the Reset? And I want to get there and talk a little bit more in depth about it. And Mark, I think I played your message at some point in time, maybe in the last year, on America and America and prophecy and what's going to undo America will indeed be the rapture. And folks, we're basing our conversation on the new book that we're carrying in our online store, and that is The Global Reset, Do Current Events Point to the Antichrist and His Worldwide Empire, co-authored Mark Hitchcock and Jeff Kinley. And I'm so honored to have both of them on the line today as we unpack this 
And you know, if you're a regular listener, I know we have lots of new listeners. If you're a regular listener, you know this has been my most frequent theme in 2021 and 2022, and that is this coming reset. Because I believe that's the tribulation. It it blossoms in the tribulation. What we're seeing is a setup for that as I speak. That's a pretty ominous thing to think about. You know, gentlemen, for this to happen, Donald Trump and his administration stood pretty much in the way of the progress of all of this reset. And to move forward with their agenda, Trump literally needed to be removed from power. That's my observation anyway, because he was such an ardent nationalist. That's true. It's like this giant convoy of globalism coming down the highway, and there was a roadblock there, and it was the Trump administration. We obviously did a complete 180 when President Biden was elected. And of course, his Build Back Better campaign is taken right from the World Economic Forum's playbook. So he's certainly complicit with that agenda as well. So yeah, I think Trump's version of America first, that does not play in their agenda at all. I want to make one more comment here in part one of my programming, and that is Last week, it would have been the last week of May, both the World Economic Forum and the World Health Organization met in Switzerland to, quite frankly, take over the world's health care. Both are global government aspirations, and both of them met at the same time. For that matter, they met in the same country. Here's a country that normally is neutral on everything, but they've just had two of the most ardent global outfits on the planet meet in their country. Could it be any clearer? Mark Hitchcock, that the forces are at work to make the world as one. You can call it what you want, a reset, a one world government or something else. Revelation 13, Revelation 17, Revelation 18 all outlines it. I don't believe the church will see this. I don't believe believers will see this, this one world government that is. I am intrigued that the same two types of organizations, World Health Organization and World Economic Forum met the same week in the same location. Your thoughts, Mark? Certainly significant. We'd have to be blind to not see the significance of that. The way this works is the first thing that happens is you have an economic, global economy, which we really have now, basically. They start with the economy, with health care. So it's not going to be a global government. You don't just come in and have a global government overnight. So making inroads in these other areas through cryptocurrencies, through digital currencies, kind of having global economic control, control over people's health care. Once you have control over the economy, once you have control over people's health care, mm-hmm. then obviously the next step after that is a global government. But they're building this one block at a time as they're going along. And people are going to wake up someday and realize that a global economy, that a global health care is going to ultimately give way to global government. I think that's how it's taking place in an ordered progression. Jeff, you want to weigh in there? The agreements of the nations have to come because of a shared crisis. And that's why it's very important for them to spin every crisis as a global crisis. And if it doesn't impact the whole globe, they need to make sure in some way that it will impact the whole globe. For example, with the war in Ukraine, it doesn't necessarily have to impact us economically or from an oil supply standpoint, but it is because of certain decisions that are being made. So they have to agree in order to come together to have this partnership to begin with, as Mark said, on different issues. But then finally, that blossoms into, hey, we're really one team here really one government. It just makes sense for us to go ahead and call ourselves one. And of course, that paves the way for one man to then lead that government. Here's where I'm going to go in part two of my programming. We do need to talk about the coming cashless society. And I've talked about it on this program pretty consistently for years for that matter, but real specifically in the last year to year and a half. You can reach Mark Hitchcock at marklhitchcock.com, marklhitchcock.com. Communicate with Jeff at jeffkinley.com, jeffkinley.com. Find the book in my online store, olivetreeviews.org, or give us a call. Another thing, I want to talk a little bit in part two of my programming about the young global leaders. This is a specialty here of Mr. Schwab, his World Economic Forum, is to target young global leaders and get them into the fold as globalists. I got a whole lineup of names here that we'll talk about that I think some you'll find quite intriguing. Others are obvious, such as Justin Trudeau and Mark Zuckerberg, but there are a lot of others that we need to consider at the same time. So I'll do that if you'll just stick around. I'm going to take a very short time out, come back with Mark Hitchcock and Jeff Kinley. Don't go away. We hope you'll stay in touch with us online through olivetreeviews.org. That's olivetreeviews.org. 
www.ministriesofgod.org. You can call us Central Time at 763-559-4444. That's 763-559-4444. Write us through the mail at Olive Tree Ministries in Jan Markell, Post Office Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. That's Post Office Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. All gifts are tax deductible. In the age of fake news and false teaching, thank you for trusting Olive Tree Ministries. Revelation was written because God wants us to know what the future holds. For Christians, the prophetic truths within provide wisdom, reassurance, and hope that God will indeed make all things new. That is why we are carrying Amir Sarfati's new book, Revealing Revelation, how God's plans for the future can change your life now. Find it in our online store at olivetreeviews.org. That's olivetreeviews.org. Or call our office, Central Time, at 763-559-4444. That's 763-559-4444. We charge no shipping in the U.S. and Canada. There is an accompanying workbook that is optional, suitable for individual or group study. God wants us to understand the past, present, and future as we await His return. What Satan is doing is he's gradually just incrementally moving in, crossing borders, all these different barricades to get to your very soul, where in the end, the Bible says the whole earth will worship the beast. You can see where Satan is heading here. We can see his trajectory, just like tracking the trajectory of a rocket. We know where it's going to land, but we're watching it happen in real time. We know you can't always be by a radio, so catch Understanding the Times Radio at your convenience online. Watch the video version of the program or listen to the audio at olivetreeviews.org, then to complete archives on YouTube, on Rumble, on Light Source, and on his channel, Christian TV. Now here are Jan Markell and her guest to wrap up today's programming. As we tackle this crisis, our efforts cannot be a series of independent initiatives running in parallel. The scale and scope of the threat we face call for a global systems level solution based on radically transforming our current fossil fuel based economy to one that is genuinely renewable and sustainable. So, ladies and gentlemen, my plea today is for countries to come together to create the environment that enables every sector of industry to take the action required. We know this will take trillions, not billions of dollars. We also know that countries, many of whom are burdened by growing levels of debt, simply cannot afford to go green. Here we need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector, with trillions at its disposal, far beyond global GDP, and with the greatest respect, beyond even the governments of the world's leaders, it offers the only real prospect of achieving fundamental economic transition. Prince Charles with trillions at his disposal. Not sure who you're referring to, but I think I know the role that will be played by an antichrist who will come in and try to make it all work well, starting with climate change, global warming, We've heard that endlessly since the early 1970s, I believe. That's when this movement really got off the ground. I'll tell you, folks, you want to see climate change. Those who stick around for the tribulation are going to see some incredible climate activities that won't be pretty. I'm spending the hour with the co-authors of a new book, Mark Hitchcock and Jeff Kinley. The book is in my online store, The Global Reset. Do current events point to the Antichrist and his worldwide empire? Jeff and Mark will be here in the Twin Cities on Thursday night, June the 9th, 7 p.m. at Revived Church in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. You can live stream that at MarkHenryMinistries.com at 7 p.m. That's Central Time, MarkHenryMinistries.com. Mark and I will be there as co-hosts of the evening. Programming will be archived at OliveTreeViews.org, OliveTreeViews.org, or MarkHenryMinistries.com. 
no cost, first come, first serve, no cost to live stream. We'll be talking about this very topic, and it is a massive topic. I think it's the issue of the hour, and so I'm so thrilled that we finally have a Christian book. Glenn Beck has written an interesting book from a secular perspective. We need the biblical perspective, which Jeff and Mark have given us here. And Mark Hitchcock, let me address this to you. The title, The Great Reset, is being employed by globalists as a smokescreen to smuggle through one of their most cherished fantasies, and that would be the cashless society. Soon, central banks will be issuing national digital currency. I've talked about that a lot on this program. They're going to be tracking every single transaction in the economy in real time. I know you've looked into this because you write about it in the book. Talk to us about it. The biblical entry point to talk about a cashless society is Revelation chapter 13, which tells us that in the end times that no one's going to be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast, the mark of the Antichrist, the number of his name, either on their right hand or their forehead. It's going to be a global pledge of allegiance. It's going to be a loyalty to the Antichrist. People are going to literally take his name upon them, and they can't buy or sell without that. That means he's going to have total control over the world economy. And the only way to have that kind of control over the global economy is to get rid of cash. As long as there's cash and people can do things on the black market or go around that system. So there's going to have to be a system economically that's trackable, traceable, probably even programmable. So for many years, students of Bible prophecy reading Revelation 13 have said, we're going to have to have at some point in time a cashless society. And we've been moving towards that for decades now, but cryptocurrencies have really ramped this up dramatically. Something folks know about a few weeks ago, if you have cryptocurrencies, yes. there was literally a cryptocurrency crash. with yes. a bloodbath. Two of them, Terra and Luna, went to zero value. Ethereum, which is the second largest one, dropped 20%. Bitcoins dropped 50% in the last six months. And I think this is all planned as well, because one of the things that immediately happened when this cryptocurrency crash took place is Janet Yellen, others have come on and said, we need global regulation of cryptocurrencies. And it fits this predictable pattern. There's a crisis that's declared to be a global crisis. Now we need global regulation. But these cryptocurrencies are decentralized. So I really think the global elites don't want these cryptocurrencies around. They want digital currencies that are issued by central banks because those are controlled by the government. And they're trackable, they're traceable, they're even programmable, which means yes. they can program where you can spend the money. You no longer can give money to a Christian ministry or to That's your right. church. That's going to be the ultimate inroad, I think, into total economic control. And on March the 9th of this year, President Biden signed an executive order for the Federal Reserve, for the Department of Treasury to look into the establishment of a central bank digital currency in America. They have one in China already. But this is the open door then into the economic system that ultimately is going to be dominated and taken over by the Antichrist and having global control. So at the World Government Forum, that was back in March, Dr. Pippa Malmgren, and folks, I played the clip of her on air here twice. I'm not going to play it again. But just to remind you that she said at this World Government Forum, she says, what underpins a world order is always the financial system. And what we're seeing in the world today we are on the brink of a dramatic change where we are about to, and I'll say it boldly, again, this is Malmgren, we're about to abandon the traditional system of money and accounting and introduce a new one. And the new accounting is what we call blockchain. It means digital. It means having an almost perfect record of every single transaction that happens in the economy. In other words, folks, if you go and buy something that's full of sugar, they might decline it because you're eating too much sugar. They know what you're buying, where you're buying. Then she goes on, the context proves that she's talking about world order because she says what underpins a world order is always the financial system. Then she says we're about to abandon the traditional system of money and accounting and introduce a new one. Jeff, why don't you weigh in here too? Notice the movement that's taking place here. We begin with things like regulations, mask mandates, travel bans with vaccines. And now with the movement of this digital currency, now it's moving into your home, into your bank account. Eventually, as Mark said in Revelation 13, it moves onto your body. It's identified in your actual body. And that mark of the beast is an indication of where your soul is. 
But what Satan is doing is he's gradually just incrementally moving in, crossing borders, all these different barricades to get to your very soul, where in the end, the Bible says the whole earth will worship the beast. You can see where Satan is heading here. We can see his trajectory, just like tracking the trajectory of a rocket. We know where it's going to land, but we're watching it happen in real time. Mark and Jeff, what has hit me is how rapidly all of this happened. Five, ten years ago, some of the things we're talking about really weren't on the horizon yet. Now, World Economic Forum did meetings since 1971, but they've only been prominent here in the last few years. As a matter of fact, two, three years ago, America was the undisputed leader of the world. As we speak, America is the laughingstock of the world. And this happened so quickly. And all the things we're talking about here have happened so quickly. Am I on base here, Jeff? Absolutely. And that's in concert with what the Bible talks about, the birth pangs of the end times. Of course, we're not actually in those actual birth pangs that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24, but we're in these Braxton Hicks contractions, as I like to say. They feel like the real thing, and you can't have them unless you're actually pregnant and headed towards a birth and birth pangs. So I do think that we're in the foreshadowing of what's happening. Again, they're coming faster and with more frequency and intensity that leads to that ultimate time of birth. Your thoughts on the speed of things, Mark Hitchcock? It's just because there's global crises now. They're ramped up in the press. It started really, a lot of this did, in 2008 with the global economic meltdown. That's really when the World Economic Forum, they wanted to seize control at that time. They just were a little bit slow on the draw. They weren't able to garner enough control then. But that was a crisis that they wanted to leverage. But they prepared themselves well, so when COVID came along, they were ready to seize that crisis. So I'd say it was kind of a dress rehearsal for them back with this global economic housing crisis and all in 2008 and 2009. But they've seized COVID, and they've squeezed every bit of control they can from that. The next control is climate change. That's going to control what kind of car you can drive, where you can drive, what you can eat what your thermostat set on in your home, it's going to delve into every area of our lives because, again, it's going to be presented as this global catastrophe that's waiting out there 10 years from now and the end of the world if we don't do something about it. The other issue they're going to be using is with cryptocurrencies. Again, this collapse and all these cryptocurrencies that are there, they're seizing that crisis to bring in all this regulation. That's why we're seeing it accelerate so much more now than ever because it's just going to be one crisis after another, as we've seen. And if there isn't a real crisis, one will be manufactured. And I opened the program with a clip where Klaus Schwab said, pretty blunt here, he said, the next crisis is already waiting for us. Well, you World Economic Forum guys are going to pounce on whatever that crisis is. My hunch is it'll have something to do with the climate. I'm not sure. I am going to play a clip here, and it is talking about the young global leaders. In other words, these globalists are trying to get a hold of the younger generation so that they can be future globalists. The World Economic Forum, with all of its influence, has even started their own schemes, one notable one being the Young Global Leaders Scheme. Their plan was to spread their radical ideology through organizations and governments around the world. And the worst thing about it is it's already in play. What we are very proud of now is the young generation like Prime Minister Trudeau, President of of Argentina and so on, so that we penetrate the cabinets. Notable names include Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Meta, formerly known as Facebook, Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, with Christia Freeland, the Deputy Prime Minister of Canada, who also sits on the board of trustees for the WEF. Infamously known for being the granddaughter of a Nazi collaborator, but her role in this and on the world stage doesn't end with sins of the father or grandfather. Freeland was directly involved in the crackdown on the Canadian truckers protest, who demonstrated around the country, especially the convoy to Ottawa, Canada's capital. This was in protest of the COVID restrictions. Freeland greenlit a government response never before seen in the West, freezing bank accounts, removing insurances, even as far as blocking crypto transactions. But the crackdown didn't just end there. Canadians were beaten, arrested, held without bail, vehicles seized, and trampled by horses. More Canadian names include Jagmeet Singh, 
the leader of the NDP, a radical left anti-oil party. Andrew Scheer, prior leader of the official opposition Conservative Party, should paint you a picture of just how opposing these people are. It will be a young world. It will be a digital world. Now who could represent such a world better than you, Prime Minister? To represent also a new open Canada. I want to use this opportunity also to thank our Canadian constituency, which always has been a very loyal and very much engaged constituency here at the Forum. But now, I think with you, together with our constituents, Prime Minister, we can make sure that in the future we strengthen the cooperation even more. The alumni from Europe include Emmanuel Macron, the President of France, Alexander de Croo, the Prime Minister of Belgium, Sana Marin, the Prime Minister of Finland, surprising names from America such as Tulsi Gabbard, a critique of everything the Great Reset entails, but most interestingly, Ivanka Trump, daughter and senior advisor to the 45th President of the United States, Donald Trump. They predicted an overpopulation crisis in the 1960s, mass starvation in the 70s, and an end of oil in the 1990s. These alarmists always demand the same thing, absolute power to dominate, transform, and control every aspect of our lives. We will never let radical socialists destroy our economy, wreck our country, or eradicate our liberty. Dan Crenshaw, congressman from Texas, Peter Buttigieg, the Secretary of Transportation in the United States. Mm. Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the United mm. Kingdom, who imposed a ban on ministers attending the summit back in 2020, where he said, Our focus is on delivering for the people, not champagne with billionaires. Hmm. He says that as Boris is still an active member of the WEF. Other key figures lurk within the WEF, including Jacinda Ardern, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, who continues to enact governmental tyranny upon the Kiwis. Cabinets that form policy, or offices that minister to our economy, aren't the only places this organisation has crept its way into worldwide. It's embedded in every aspect of our lives, the World Economic Forum hosts annual meetings since 1971. The richest and most influential names and faces gather in Davos, Switzerland. Because the forum isn't just for those at the top. It's also about creating opportunities for anyone who wants to make the world a better place. Every industry leader attends, and even certain individuals from the entertainment industry. Names like Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas, Pharrell, the famous American music producer and songwriter. Leonardo DiCaprio. And not only has he starred in many blockbuster movies produced in Hollywood, but has used his platform to echo climate alarmism. If you do not believe in climate change, you do not believe in facts or in science or empirical truths. And therefore, in my humble opinion, should not be allowed to hold public office. Bono from U2, the Irish rock band, who works hand in hand to reshape global sectors. It's amoral, it requires our instruction. Capitalism has taken more people out of poverty than any other ism, but it is a wild beast, and if not tamed, it can chew up a lot of people. If you just join me, you're listening to Understanding the Times Radio. I'm Jan Mark Hill. I have on the line co-authors of a new book, Mark Hitchcock and Jeff Kinley. The book is The Global Reset. Do current events point to the Antichrist and his worldwide empire? Find it in my online store, olivetreeviews.org, or in our various newsletters. Mark Hitchcock, your thoughts on the clip you just heard about the young global leaders? It's not surprising. They're trying to get these young global leaders to indoctrinate them. 
to secure their loyalty. They're really grooming the future generation of globalists. I know it's always difficult to make these kind of comparisons, but it's kind of like the Hitler Youth. You're reaching those who are younger to indoctrinate them, to secure their loyalty, to get them on board with what you're doing, because obviously they're the future generation. He mentioned you have a young world and a digital world. That's our world out there today, and they're seizing on those who are younger to gain leverage with the young in our world. And that's really who a lot of the people that are the most vocal about climate change, Mm -hmm. about all these things, really are this younger generation. They're going for this younger generation to bring about this global change. Jeff Kinley, I'm going to transition just a little bit here, just in the interest of time. And you've got a chapter in this book, How Does America Fit Into the Reset? We talked about it a few minutes ago. I think you asked the question here, have we reached a point of no return in America? I kind of think we have. And then you also stress the importance of, if we can be so blunt, Romans 1 has happened to America. Talk to us about this, please. I'm reminded of what the British historian Arnold Toynbee once said. He said, you know, a lot of countries, they don't die from murder. They die from suicide. They implode from within. So really the death of a nation is brought on gradually. It intensifies as you get toward the end. And if you just take Romans 1, Janet, as a template and just lay it over a map of America, politically, culturally, morally, spiritually, what you find is we're checking off all the boxes there. We begin with our rejection of God that leads to all sorts of speculation and deviance morally. It gets really to the point where God says he has to abandon a culture. And I think that's really where we are right now. And as America, I think, continues to weaken as a world superpower, we will have to become more sympathetic to a global governance model, especially in the context of the current worldwide crises that we're going through right now. There's really no home field advantage for Christians here anymore. We're really playing on the opposing team's field. It's a time for Christians to wake up, to wise up, and to look around at their world, to look at their Bible, to say, hey, the walls are closing in on the church. The good news is I really do think this is a golden moment for us as the church. We are never more like the first century than we are right now. It's a great opportunity, but it's also a great challenge as we watch really the sunset on our country. I'm going to read a couple of paragraphs from your book. You say, gentlemen, our planet is groaning and heaving. War, social and racial unrest, shattered families, surging suicide, runaway debt, inflation, deadly new viruses, drug and alcohol abuse, lawlessness, political polarization are coalescing to drive civilization to its knees. You write, in today's environment, good news can be difficult to find. Hope is in short supply. Our world is increasingly weary, worried and worn. Something has to change. Something big. We all know it. We all know deep down inside that this world is not what it is supposed to be. We all yearn for things to be much better. We imagine utopia on earth, a new world order, a great society permeated with peace and prosperity where everything is made right. But how in the world could that ever come about? And then you say, and I'll wrap it up here, the only true global resetter is God. Only the creator can be the recreator. Only the one who set the world in motion can reset it back to its original condition. God is the great resetter, and the work of total transformation will commence on the day when he sends Jesus Christ the Prince of Peace, back to planet Earth, just as he promised 2,000 years ago when Jesus ascended back to heaven. When Jesus fulfills that promise and comes back to Earth, everything will change. And then you write, his return to planet Earth is the fulcrum of history. All hope for this dying, broken, disintegrating world flows from the reality that he is coming again to conquer and receive the inheritance that Adam and Eve forfeited in the garden. He will do it. Mark, thank you for writing that, both of you for writing that. Talk to us a little bit more about this final reset and how people can make sure that they're a part of this final reset. Well, that's good news right there. I love listening to that. She read that. That's the best news we can hear is that Jesus Christ is coming back someday. He's the great resetter. The only one who can reset it is the one who made it. He's going to come back and make all things new, just as is promised in Scripture. We read in Isaiah chapter 9, there will be no end to the increase of his government on the throne of David and his kingdom to establish it when justice and peace from then on and forevermore. I mean, that's what Jesus is coming back to do as the Prince of Peace. The world today, what people look for is prosperity and peace. You think about every political campaign, you hear people want peace and they want prosperity. 
And that's what Jesus Christ is bringing to this world when he returns. The way that we can know that we're part of this great reset that Christ will bring when he returns to the earth is to have a personal reset. We need a personal reset because we're sinful. We're fallen. We need to be made right with God through Jesus Christ. And Jesus came and purchased a pardon for us when he died on the cross. And by receiving him and trusting in him to be our Savior, we can have our sins washed away. We can receive the gift of eternal life. We can be ready for Christ when he comes at the rapture. And we'll rule and reign with him on the earth for a thousand years as he comes back to bring about the ultimate global reset that he'll bring about as King of Kings and Lord of Lords and the Prince of Peace. Jeff Kinley, you go ahead and take a minute or two to wrap things up. And that was really beautiful. What Mark just said is so true, because when we know Jesus Christ, we have hope. And if there's one thing this world doesn't have right now, it's hope. Fear is the narrative that is manipulating and really motivating the whole planet right now. And what we need is hope. And Christ gives that hope both personally through the forgiveness of sin and for a future hope as well. I love what Titus 2.13 says, that the rapture, the return of Christ for his church is the blessed hope. And hope means even more as times get darker and as we grow closer to the end of time. And so our hope really just increases as our anticipation grows for this return. It really does. Christ is, as I've said in the past, he's the ark of salvation. And he wants to put us inside as this global storm is brewing. And he wants to save us and lift us up and take us to the Father's house. That really is a bright future for anyone who puts their trust in Jesus. Folks, I hope you'll either tune in on Thursday, June 9th, or come on out if you're in the Upper Midwest to Revive Church in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, June 9th. That's Thursday, 7 to 9 p.m., Twin Cities area. My two guests will be Mark Hitchcock and Jeff Kinley, co-hosting yours truly and Pastor Mark Henry. Live streamed MarkHenryMinistries.com, MarkHenryMinistries.com, archived. You can watch it anytime, OliveTreeViews.org, and go to video. Again, the church is 7849 West Broadway, Brooklyn Park, and that's Thursday, June 9th. No cost to either attend or live stream. And you can send in questions in person or online, and we'll try to get to them that evening, Thursday, June 9th. And you can get a hold of the book that night as well. You can also find it in my online store at olivetreeviews.org, olivetreeviews.org. I want to go out of the program just a thought or two as we close this out. And gentlemen, thank you so much for giving up the time today. I'm so pleased that you guys wrote this from a Christian and biblical perspective on the reset. We've got the secular view, but we need the biblical view. And you guys did that. And I'm so thrilled that you did. But watching everyday events, including crime and government out of control and watching efforts at building a one world system, it can terrify some. It seems each day tops the last day and things are happening at such a pace. It's hard to keep up with all that's going on. It can be so tempting to let our minds and hearts get both distracted and discouraged. It can be easy to feel overwhelmed. No matter who sits in government, we can have assurance in knowing that God sits on the throne no matter how dim things seem to be or how dark they get. Na ye ko pedi.